In this video, I'm going to summarize how to solve a second order linear differential equation with constant coefficients, and we will just focus on the homogeneous case. Okay? So, you know, the first step is to change this to its corresponding auxiliary equation or the characteristic equation, right? And you see, this is nothing but just a quadratic equation in terms of r. And of course, we have three possibilities. The first one is we get two different r values and we call that to be distinct roots, and we just say that to be r1 and r2. If we find out these two r values, and this will be the building blocks that we're going to use for the solution to this differential equation. So we are going to use e to the r1 t, and the second one is e to the r2 t. This will be the building blocks to the solution to this differential equation. And you know you have to multiply this building block by c1, and the second building block by C2. At the end, you add them together, that's how you get the general solution, okay? All right, second situation, what if we have a repeated root, meaning these two r are actually the same? So we'll just call this to be r. In this case, the first building block is e to the rt. And the second one, I'm not just going to put down e to the rt, because they will not be linearly independent. Well, instead, just e to the rt, but remember, we will have to multiply by this t. And you can check out my other video, I explained it, why we must have this t, how we derive it to end up with this t, all right? So you can check out the video in my description. All right, the third possibility is a new one that we're going to see in this video. What if we end up with complex roots? Well, I'm just going to write this as r equals to alpha plus minus beta i. Okay, so what are we going to do when we have a complex root? Okay, so let's see. We still have to use e to the rt, all right? So let me just look at r to be the positive version first. So r is equal to alpha plus beta i first with you guys. And the minus version is pretty much the same thing, and you will see. Our goal is to figure out what are the building blocks to our differential uh, equation, right? Building blocks, the, the to the solution to that differential equation. Okay, so I'm just gonna plug in this into e to the rt, and let me write this down right here. We know e to the rt, right? All in all, we still have to plug in whatever r we have into e to the rt. But this case, the r is this. So I'll write it down as e, parentheses, r is alpha plus beta i, and then multiply by t. Okay, as usual, we are just going to distribute the t into the parentheses, and we see we have e to the alpha t. And because we're adding exponent, which is the same as saying multiply by e as a base, and the second part right here, it will be just t times beta and then times i, right? And let me write down the i first, like this. And then we are going to put down the beta t like that. Well, alpha and beta, they are just real numbers. So for the first one, e to the alpha t is just good. It's just real, so no problem for that. Let me just write it down. This is e to the alpha t. Well, the trouble comes right here. What's e to the i beta t? This is the part that we have to use the Euler's formula. And let me just write it down on the side for you guys. We know by the, the Euler's formula, and you can watch my other video, I show you guys how to prove that formula, all right? e to the i theta, okay? This is the same as saying um, cosine theta, and then we add it with i sine theta. And the way to remember it is c i s, cosine theta plus i times sine theta. This is the Euler's formula. Okay, in our case, the theta is the beta t together. So I will multiply and be sure you use the parentheses, of course, right? This thing right here, I will just plug in beta t into theta. That means I will end up with cosine and beta t into here. So we have cosine of beta t. And then we will be adding with i times sine of beta t. Just like this. At the end, of course, you can distribute it into the parentheses. And I will just do so for you guys. e to the alpha t times cosine of beta t. And then let me just put down plus i is still right here, and then we have e to the beta t, and then multiply by sine of beta t. All right, so just to make this super clear for you guys and make it simple, once we have this, 
I get my two building blocks for the solution to the differential equation. This right here is the first one. And this right here is the second one. And let me just put this down right here for you guys, and I'll talk more about uh, why didn't I use the minus and things like that for you guys, all right? So the building blocks for the solution that we're going to use is first, e to the alpha t times cosine of beta t. This is my beta. And the second one is going to be e to the alpha t times sine of beta t, like this. And that will do it. And remember, you always have to multiply this by a constant, so we just call that to be C1, and we can call this to be C2. At the end, we add them together, and that will be the general solution to that differential equation if its auxiliary equation has complex roots, like this. All right, so real quick, why did I just use plus instead of the minus? In fact, it doesn't really matter, so I'll change it for you guys. I'll do this in blue. So I erase the plus in between, so you can see it's like saying minus here, but I can still put this down as plus, right? So if you want to talk about alpha minus beta, it's the same as saying alpha plus negative beta i, yeah? And then I was just plugging negative beta into all my beta here. So this right here is alpha plus negative beta. And then for negative beta, we have this being negative beta. And then I'll plug in negative beta right here into this, which you have negative beta here. And then this right here is still negative beta, right? Okay, cosine, it's an even function. So if you have a negative inside, it's still, you know, it's still positive anyways. So this is okay. Negative beta t inside of the cosine is the same as cosine of positive beta t. All right, in this case, okay, I have sine of negative beta t right here. But sine is an even function, so if you want to take care of the negative, what we are going to do is just, you know, we can just have negative sine instead. So instead of plus right here, we will have minus, and then inside we will have positive beta t. And you see, the building blocks are still the same thing, right? The angle stays the same. Positive beta t inside of both cosine and sine. So same right here. And a second thing I want to address is that you may be wondering, what didn't I, why didn't I include I? Well, if you want to include I next to the, uh, this part, right, I with a sign, right? If you want to include I, it's okay. But remember, once you include I, and you still have to remember to do the C1 and C2, and then you add them up together to construct the general solution. When you have this I, let me tell you, your C2, it's going to be a complex value as well. So that this and that multiply, at the end, you end up with a real number. That's why you don't need to worry about the i if you don't want to. So let me just erase this and erase that, put a comma, first building block, second building block. And I'm going to show you guys an example right here. All right, suppose I want to solve this. y double prime plus 6y prime plus 10y is equal to 0. All right, so now let's change this. We will have r squared plus 6r plus 10 is equal to 0. This is not factorable, and we, have, we can just use the quadratic formula if you guys would like, right? Anyways, r is going to be, by using the quadratic formula, we will have negative b, and b in our case is 6, right? So we have negative 6. And we will have the plus minus. We take the square root, and we put down b squared, which is 6, and then we square that. And then we will be minus in 4 times a is 1. And the c value is 10, just like this, right? And then this is all over 2 times a, which is just 2 times 1. And let's see, this is negative 6, no problem. And then we have plus minus, no problem. And we have inside, 6 squared is 36, minus 40. 36 minus 40 is negative 4, right? So this is plus negative 4 in the square root like this, and all over 2. And you see this is going to be negative 6 plus minus. This is going to give us 2i. And then instead of looking at this as all over 2, I can say this is over 2 here, over 2 here. So you can see this quickly. It's just negative 3 plus minus i, isn't it? Right now, you see this is the r, and it's complex value. This right here is your alpha. Alpha is negative 3. And the beta is this one. 
the coefficient for the i, so beta is 1. When you have this information, you are done to get the um, solution to the differential equation. So let me just put this down for you guys. Okay, the first building block to the solution is going to be e to the negative 3 t, and we multiply by cosine. And then we have the beta to be 1. And of course, let me just emphasize the 1. But if you don't want to write it down the 1, it's okay. Let me just say 1 t. This is the first building block, and the second building, building block is e to the negative 3t, and we multiply by sine of 1t, like this. Right, and then next, we'll just say, okay, multiply this by c1, multiply this by c2, and then we add them together, and... This is the general solution to that differential equation. Nice and easy, right?